Hey there, everybody, and welcome to Fearless Thinking, a podcast designed to help you navigate authentic leadership and the entrepreneurial journey. I'm your host, Michael DeVue, and these are my thoughts, lessons, and insights from my entrepreneurial journey into coaching, workshops, motivational speaking, and of course, what I picked up from interviews with inspiring leaders and entrepreneurs along the way. My mission is to help people unlock their untapped potential by using fear as a catalyst for powerful change and growth so they can step into the greatest version of their most authentic selves. All right, let's get into some fearless thinking. All right, welcome back, uh, future change makers, <laughs> to Fearless Thinking, episode five, the end of the week. It has taken me two, three weeks, three, probably three weeks. I keep getting blurry, sorry. Three weeks to, to get just these five episodes. Was I, I'm trying to do my best to record them every single day and to try to like, well, I'm going to drop them five days a week. And I, I want you guys to get the sense and the feeling that you're getting me every single day. And I apologize if that's not the case because... Hey, life gets in the way, things happen. And, you know, I, I, so many different things that I'm working on, fires, irons in the fire, you know, and, and I'm, I'm trying to make this as much of a priority as I can. And it just seems like one of those things where it's like interruption, interruption, interruption. However, I have them written out. I have the, I have the scripts written out for these episodes and I'm, I'm ready to go. So week one, episode five, it's the end of the first week of the launch of Fearless Thinking from the Fearless Road podcast. I'm your host, Michael DeVue, and um, today we, well, this whole week, we've actually been talking about authenticity and leadership, sort of like doing a deep dive into authenticity, and we're going to come back to that subject matter a little later on, probably in the next couple months, as I come in and out of talking about authenticity. It's one of the areas that I'm very fascinated with in terms of leadership, but specifically right now, authenticity as it pertains to, well, all of us. I guess, um, you know, whether whether you're in leadership, entrepreneurship, executive, you know, even if you're just an employee at a, at a, at a company trying to find your authentic voice or at least find if find out if you can lend your authentic voice. You know, this whole world, well, maybe not the whole world, I suppose, but certainly in America right now, we're chasing authenticity like it's this rare breed of, you know, it's the it's the it's the white stag you know, and I think the reason that it's so so elusive for a number of actually there's a couple of reasons that I think it's so elusive for us is number one, we've never really been taught to know our own authenticity. Number two, we've always been taught to to be something for other people. From the moment we get into kindergarten, all the way through middle school, junior high, high school, and college, all we ever do is try to fit in. All we ever do is adapt and adopt other people's, people's perception of what is right, what is correct, and what is necessary to, to live, to survive. You know, there are standardized tests. There are uniforms you have to wear. There's outfits. Even if you don't wear uniforms, you just should be wearing something that everybody thinks looks cool. And if you're not wearing something that people look, think looks cool, you're not cool. So now you're not fitting in. You're not a jock. You're not a cheerleader. You're not a geek. You're not a theater person. You're not a band person. I mean, my God, the labels we put on ourselves growing up just trying to be, right? We haven't even figured out who we are. And we're already assigning all this crap on top of ourselves authenticity is the last thing we're even looking for. And gosh, you know, I hope our parents, your parents, people out there, parents today are helping kids understand how to find and hold on to their own authentic light because you will get to a place. Trust me, it's going to happen when you stop and the world stops and everything crumbles and it doesn't seem to work for you. And you're like, oh, my God, who the fuck am I? Who am I? who's my authentic person? Who is the one that I bring into the boardroom, the one that I bring to the office, the one that I bring at home, the one that I bring to my friends, the one that I'm with the kids when I'm on the schoolyard or out at the at the soccer field. Like we have so many different versions of ourselves. It's in, it's in, it's amazing to me that we don't have more issues. Well, probably we do, you know, needing psychology and help. I mean, better help's out there. It's the number one thing that's happening. Everybody's getting better help, better help, better help. Why? Because we don't actually understand what it means to be authentic. We suddenly think it means to be raw, that it means to be sharing and spilling our guts or somebody else's truth, God forbid. That's not authenticity. 
So, sorry, I got on a little bit of a rant there. I apologize. But, you know, my journey towards authenticity started very early. And I had to not only navigate standardized testing and all those things you find out at school, but I was bullied incessantly. And I had to navigate the hallways for safety. I had to know the time of day, the 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 hallway we were in, the locker I was near, the escape route I had to get near or get to in order to avoid detection by my bullies so that I could just learn and go to school. So I wouldn't get beat up after school, before school, during school. I mean, no child should ever go through that crap. It just, it's insane to me that it even happened. But that was my journey. And for me, I held on to my authenticity because if they were going to hate me, here's the funny thing. They already hated me. They hated me for being different. They hated me for being myself. And I was like, well, if you're going to hate me, then I'm just going to be me. Like, I'm going to be me no matter what you do. Like, clearly, it doesn't matter how much I try to shift and change who I am. That's not enough to stop you from torturing me or to stop you guys from hating me or you guys from making fun of me. So if I'm going to be I'm going to if I'm going to pay the piper, if I'm going to pay the price, I'm going to do crime. Right. So I'm going to be as authentic as I can. In fact, a friend of mine, well, I would say friend, but a a, a former student from my high school days reached out to me this 40 some odd years ago and mentioned and said something to me in a message that he was he really re had mad respect for me and really and really i can't remember the words but just mad respect and 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 um for, for how I stood up for myself. And I was like, tell me what you mean. And then he was like, you just knew how to be authentic. You never were apologetic about who you were. And I can't believe that my behavior, that my standing up for myself, wanting to be who I was, regardless, I almost said irregardless, that's not a word, <laughs> regardless of what other people did or said, was was a beacon of light and hope for somebody else, was 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 a, was a you know, role modeling. And that's a, that's a, that's, that is a, a lesson for all of us. You don't know when you're going to role model, okay? You have no idea at what point in your life that you are actively becoming and behaving like a role model for somebody else who's looking at you and taking in what you do and looking at it and thinking, God, I wish I had some of that. I wish I could do that. And then the rest of your life you walk in fear, intimidate, intimidated with shame. Uh, for whatever, I mean, name it. There, there's a the list is huge, and then we get here, you know, in your 40s and your 50s, and you're trying to figure it out, right? So, I digress again. <laughs> Building a business with soul. Uh, this is the heart, one of the hearts of authentic entrepreneurship. It, it, when you're when you're starting out your journey to build a business, your own business, your empire, if you will, building a business with soul is is hard to do because, in fact, it's almost. How do I put this? There isn't anything else for you to do. It is you. Like, you're putting your life into this business. You're not hiring th thousands of people and building widgets or whatever. You're putting everything who, who you are into it. So, in essence, it's kind of like your soul is in there. But are you doing the things that's necessary, A, to protect it, B, to ensure that you're following a mission and a, and a set of values that honor your soul, the soul of your company and the soul of who you want it to be? So imagine your business not just as a profit machine, right, but as a force for good, driving purpose and, and anchored in actual ethical practices, not like other companies I shall not uh, name. You know, so we're going to explore some of the cornerstones of authentic entrepreneurship where passion meets impact and fuels our success in today's very diverse and socially conscious marketplace. So the power of authenticity. It's a, this is a massive thing. It's it, when you're authentic and people feel it, when your customers, when your audience, when your target market, when your listeners and your subscribers and your followers, when they sense authenticity, what happens? Like, the numbers go up. People line up. The impact is real. It's powerful stuff. And it's kind of cool. So if you can tap into your authenticity, man, like, that's your superpower. Authentic entrepreneurs are often guided by a very strong sense of purpose, and they build their businesses around their the causes they believe in because that's their value and their passion, right? They let it inform their decisions. And this authenticity actually fosters, you know, their trust with customers and employees and their partners as they build their business and as they move in their phases and stages of entrepreneurship, creating a more inclusive and an impactful entrepreneurial landscape. It's 
if you can think about it from the very beginning and you can sort of weave in really, really strong fibers of authenticity throughout the process and the progress, I think you're going to find you're going to be okay. You're going to be better than okay. I think success is something that's just going to sort of find its way to you. You will have you'll have challenges. Don't get me wrong. You're going to have challenges. But if you stay authentic and you do impact people and touch people in a way that feels authentic, authentic to them, it's going to be drawn to you. It's going to come to you, right? So the, what are the benefits of authentic and, you know, for aspiring entrepreneurs, if you're listening out there and you're just getting started on your journey, you know, whether you're a young person and you're, you're, you've got an idea and you're headed out into the world or you're older like me, or, you know, you started your entrepreneurship journey at the age of 52, you know, where you're like, um, I need to take all the things I know and do something better with it than what I've been doing. And that's the beginning of my journey. It's still the beginning of my, well, it's funny because sometimes I think about the beginning of my entrepreneurship journey and it's not the day I decided I want to step into business for myself. It started years ago when I learned all the things I needed to get here. All of the skill sets, all of the knowledge bases, all of the relationship connections that I have made along the way that are helping me build this. That's when it started. And you know what? You don't know that. Sometimes you just don't realize. So don't burn those bridges, people. I'm talking, you know, be very careful about that when you make those decisions. Be a big, a big, a be a bridge builder, right? Not a bridge burner. I'm telling you, it's important. I mean, I just talked to somebody I knew from 2009 who I, I worked with uh, at the film festivals in Los Angeles, AF, AFI film festivals in Los Angeles. And she worked with me and, and, and we hadn't talked, I think, since 2010. I think she and her husband finally left and went back to Australia and, and New Zealand. And the connection was still there when I reached out to her recently and I wanted to talk to her about a business opportunity. And it was like, Davu, what, what do you need? I'm here for it. Like, I've, you've always believed in me. You've been a powerful person. I love your impact in this world. What do you, what's going on? What can I do? That's pretty amazing stuff to hear from someone. And to know that your impact and the footprint you left behind is actually part of the bridge you built to your ultimate success. So, yeah. Finding your niche. I digressed again. <laughs> Finding your niche. Okay, so leading with purpose, you know, it helps you identify the niche that aligns with your values. When you work on finding your purpose, in fact, there's a new book I was reading. It's called Purpose by Gina Bianchini. Uh, she, she's the one who built Mighty Network. You should pick it up. It's fantastic. I love the, I, actually I'm doing my Purpose 30 right now, which is talking about how to do your Purpose 30 and you write down every morning, you get up for 30 minutes and you write down your purpose or you, you write down a series of things to get to your purpose. The idea is that over this period of time, you, it will slowly come out and you will see a, a through line, a thread, if you will, that helps you identify what that is. Now, I am pretty certain I know what my purpose is, but what I'm trying to, to I'm trying to align things for myself. I'm trying to make sure that my messaging, my values, my propositions, my business models, uh, and all of the, the structures that I'm building and putting together are in alignment with these things and deliver on all these fronts because I don't because it's my passion. I mean, I I finally think I found what I want to do and who I want to be. Oh my god. And you know when you're when you do, when you discover it at after 50, you're in a hurry. <laughs> I mean, god, I'm in such a hurry to get it done. I don't have a I'm 50 years behind me. I'm 50 years behind me. I have to get it done now. So yeah, I'm in a kind of a push, if you will, to 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 light all the fires in all of the engines because I finally figured out what it is I'm supposed to do with all this stuff. And now I'm trying to like line them all up, you know? So yeah, finding your niche, that's crucial because you know what's really cool about when you find your niche and you can sort of align that niche with your with what you're serving, your services, your, your core audience and your products. What's amazing about the internet is the X factor. Okay, so back in the day when you did a brick and mortar setup or whatever, you know, you had to hope that people would get, you know, you put it in the yellow pages if anybody out there knows what the yellow pages are. In fact, it's what's funny Side note, again, digressing. I'm here at my dad's ranch, um, and <laughs> we were talking, and we were talking about finding an optometrist. 
And my stepmom, Julie, was like, we should look it up in the yellow pages. And I was like, the yellow pages? Like, what are you talking about? What yellow pages? It's like, yeah, we live in this small little town in the mountains, and they have this tiny little yellow pages. People still use this thing and actually put their information in it. I honestly thought that had gone the way of the dodo bird. But if you remember the yellow pages and you weren't just sitting on it so you could get your, you know, learn how to drive, only certain older people would understand what this means. The... Yell, you know, that you're trying to find your audience for your brick and mortar. You're trying to target people with your advertising. You're trying to get them to come to you. And you're in a very small, tiny little world. A little, you have your impact is out here. You're literally backyard, your community, right? Today, with the internet, you niche down. People go, oh, but I need, I need to make sure I can reach all these different people and all these different categories and da 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 da. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because that one thing that you do that you think nobody else will be interested in. Guess what? Out of the five billion people on this planet, there's probably a million of them who want what you have. And to do a successful business, you only need about 100,000 of them. And if you can find them and get your message to them, boom, magic, right? So find your niche, lead with purpose. Um, you will begin, oh, well, that's what it says in my notes. You'll attract customers who share your passion and build your brand with clear identity. Clear identity. That is key. So now, overcoming fear with passion. Mm -hmm. Fearless road. This is what I talk about. I love fear. I love fear. Fear is such a powerful motivator. It's such a massive catalyst. I spent my life insisting that fear would not control me. That fear would not, um, what's the word, control my life. That it wouldn't interfere. That hmm, Interfere. Sorry. <laughs> that... Fear would not be the thing that defines my life. I wouldn't let it. And you know the irony in that? I spent so much freaking time making sure that I was addressing, confronting, dealing with, overcoming, navigating my fears that fear actually affected my entire journey. And what do I talk about today? Hello, making fear your friend. What do I talk about on the on the podcast, the Fearless World podcast? The intersection of fear and ingenuity, the intersection of fear and creativity, the entrepreneurial journey, and the intersection of fear. What do we call this? Fearless thinking podcast. How? Do, what did I do on my? You know the events that I do or my fifth quarter consulting. I talk about fear. I how to take fear. It's everybody's got it, right? How to take it and turn it into a fuel and a tool and turn it into a catalyst for powerful change and success in your life so that you can step into the most authentic version, the best authentic version of yourself, right? And that's at every stage, every level, professional growth, personal growth, you name it, right? It's such an amazing thing. So overcoming fear with passion. Fear of failure is such a common hurdle, right? But when you, on well, but when, blah, 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 look, I'm not even going to cut that out. <laughs> when purpose fuels your passion, you're more likely to see challenges as opportunities and persevere through setbacks. It's what I say on my mission board, on my manifestation. I want to see opportunities as stepping stones. And what did the universe do? Huh, here you go. Here's another opportunity. Here's another stepping stone. Careful what you ask for. But yes, overcoming fears with passion. If you've got a fear that's in your way, if you've got a fear that's blocking you, take a minute and focus on your passion and your purpose. You, you might find that they're off. You know, that could be what's happening. If you've got fear showing up, it might be because your passion and your purpose aren't in alignment and you're not focused on that. So take a minute. Write it down. Get focused on your on your passion and your purpose. And those fears might just actually shift and move along the way. So next, the benefits of current entrepreneurship. Oh, sorry. Benefits of current entrepreneurs and executives, right? What are the benefits of having authenticity? Um, excuse me. That's terrible. What are the benefits? <laughs> Let me start that again. The benefits of for, for current entrepreneurs and executives, the power of authenticity, you have a more engaged workforce. By the way, a purpose-driven mission, not just you, but in your businesses, right, inspires and motivates your employees. They see you. They feel your authenticity. They follow you. And I'm not talking about likes and subscribes because we all know that crap doesn't work. It ain't real. 
they feel connected to a cause greater than themselves, leading to higher engagement and productivity. Now, a higher, a more engaged workforce who believes in your mission, who believes in your authenticity, you can galvanize them through a generous spirit. And I'll tell you why I mentioned that. My friend Bob De Pasquale, uh, you can find him on LinkedIn. Brilliant dude on generosity. That's what he talks about, generosity. He talks about specifically generosity and how to bring that spirit to your workplace so that you can have more impact on your employees and have a better retention and better return for your employees. And an engaged workforce who believes in your authenticity, believes in your purpose and your mission, and knows that you're doing it from a generous place, a generous spirit, not just giving, but gifting, right, of yourself, of everything, of your talents, of your time, of your vulnerability creates an amazing, impactful, and engaged workforce. Now, attracting conscious consumers. So this is outside, right? This, this is the inside. We're going outside, right? This moves, by the way, out of where you are into the world. And today's consumers are always increasingly drawn to brands that stand for something. Not just stand for something in the words. Not just chit-chat, big back talk about, you know, like pat responses and it sounds great and a sound bite or a little, you know, social media post. We are getting too smart to fall for that stuff. It has to be authentic and genuine. So spend some time and figure out what that looks like for you as a business message, as a marketing message. It really should align. And if it doesn't, maybe hold off on spitting all that garbage out there into the world. You know what I mean? Because we've got tired eyes and tired minds. We don't need to see it every single day. We need to see truth and authenticity, right? So authenticity fosters trust and loyalty leading to sustainable business growth. They will stay with you. Brand loyalty is a thing. Get behind it. Get behind it and do it. Okay, so tools for authentic entrepreneurship. Um, start by articulating your core values and the social or environmental impact that you want to create. This guides your decision making and attracts like-minded stakeholders. Embrace your ethical uh, practices because eth ethics is all part of authenticity. Conducting business with integrity and fairness. We will talk about integrity in the next uh, week's episodes. Uh, uphold ethical standards in your operations and dealings with your employees and your suppliers and your customers, which is easy to do when you come from a place of authenticity and integrity. You don't have to worry because you're coming from a real solid place. And transparency. You know, this builds trust. If you're honest about your products and your services, you don't have to worry. You can avoid misleading advertising and you can cultivate transparency in your, in your marketing and in your communication. So, to wrap all this up, because I've gone on too long now, and it's almost 22 minutes. I promise it was only 12 to so many minutes. I have a few more notes here, but I'm not going to say anything more. I'm just going to say, look, building an authentic business as an entrepreneur means going beyond your profits. It's about aligning your passion with your purpose and conducting your business ethically and making an impact, a positive impact on your world. Your world. Uh, the world, yes, but your world. Remember, it's yours. It's, 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 it's everything that you touch, everything you see, everything you impact that's around you. That's personal to you. That's your world. That should matter. This kind of authenticity inspires loyalty, fosters innovation, and paves the way for more inclusive and sustainable futures for additional entrepreneurship. So remember, success is not just about financial gains, man. Success is about building a business that actually reflects your values and makes a difference. It reflects your passion and your mission. So go forth, my friends. Find your purpose. Create a business that leaves a positive impact and a mark on this world. And uh, yeah, do some fearless thinking this week. All right, I'm Michael Babu. I'll talk to you later. Bye.